Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. My tab count up here is rapidly declining, so that's good as I produce a lot more shorter videos. So back uh, in December of last year, there was the American Geophysical Union 2023 conference. And this was an interesting uh, paper that was presented um, about the idea that quartz gobbling worms are weathering the earth's soils. So new research in mineral weathering shows that earthworms may be an important contributor to earth's weathering cycle. So they gobble these quartz grains as part of their in their in their digestive systems or gizzards and these grains um, help them to break down uh, their food. So worms are, of course, in the business of breaking down dead things and freeing up nutrients as they wiggle their way through soils. As they chomp, they also weather minerals in a big way. So this new research has shown that worms may be contributing more to the earth weathering cycle than previously thought. The short-term effects on plant growth and the soil's organic nutrient storage capability are well understood. Ask any gardener. But how worms actually affect mineral weathering and resultant nutrient availability over longer time periods hasn't been studied as much. So the worms aren't really on the radar in the ge geology world. Okay, so this paper is trying to take a longer term view and make sure that geologists understand that the simple earthworm is key in um, weathering, basically. Um, and, uh, you know, people are looking at enhanced weathering with things like um, olivine and even zeolites. Zeolites make up cat litter to, uh, you know, have these very small particles or powders of these minerals in order to capture large amounts of CO2 to increase the rate of weathering, the natural rate of weathering, which takes CO2 out of the atmosphere long term. So if we can enhance weathering, make it happen more quickly, we can perhaps uh, increase, you know, produce some huge carbon sinks to withdraw CO2 from the atmosphere ocean system. So the question that they're asking is, how do worms break down the primary minerals that form deep in the Earth's crust? So Earth's weathering cycle, it moves minerals that are formed in Earth's crust up into the soil where plants and animals can use them. Weather is mainly driven by abiotic or non-biological processes, such as the movement of water, erosion, and especially changes in temperature. So freeze-thaw, freeze-thaw, it cracks open larger rocks and grains and make smaller and smaller particles. Plants and animals also contribute. So biology accelerates and plays a key role in the earth weathering cycle. So earthworms are like birds. They have gizzards. Okay, so gizzards are organs in their digestive tract that grind up food with the aid of particles of rock or grit. So worms ingest the mineral grains to keep in their gizzards, and that helps them break down the rest of the soil to release nutrients and other minerals that are vital for plant growth. Okay, so to understand how much earthworms contribute to mineral weathering, they studied quartz-laden soils in Puerto Rico's El Yunk National Forest, where some soils there host hundreds of earthworms Per square meter. So they use um, different isotope measurements, beryllium isotopes. So beryllium isotopes form when cosmic radiation hits the mineral grains in the soil. And this allows them to determine how long the quartz is spent at different soil depths. And they look at the differences in the sizes of the quartz grains at various depths to determine the weathering rate in each soil layer. So they found that where the earthworms are burrowing and moving about in the soil, the quartz grain size has been reduced by nearly half over 10 to 20,000 years. But where there's no earthworms, there's not a reduction of size. 
So once worms enter the picture, you can see this rapid shrinking of the grain size. Biology is basically accelerating and plays a key role in the earth weathering cycle. The quartz grains in the worm's gizzards grind other soil components, but that, but, but that process eventually breaks down the quartz grains themselves, which is the mechanism that they think is causing this. Microbes in the worm's gut could help chemically dissolve quartz grains, according to the researchers, and then they're replaced by other quartz grains. So the estimate is that worms cause about 2% of the silicate weathering in the, in the Puerto Rico El Yunk, Yunku soils. That's a very substantial contribution, doesn't seem like it, 2%, but it, it is huge over long periods of time. So this research was um, presented at the AGU annual meeting 2023 in San Francisco. So worms increase soil weathering rates wherever they go. As a result of warmer temperatures, earthworms are expanding their territories to higher altitudes and higher latitudes, to colder regions. They're migrating like all the other uh, flora and, and fauna on the, on the planet. So human activities have also quickened the spread of earthworms as fishers who use the worms for bait and gardeners release earthworms into previously worm-free soils. Worm communities move only a few meters per year, meaning the worldwide worm takeover could take a while. So we don't have to worry about earthworms taking over the planet. Here's a really long one. Um, this uh, postdoc is just sort of having a bit of fun pretending they're going to eat the thing for lunch. Um, so, th but the findings were mostly in the El Yunk uh, forest, but they also, the team also looked at changes in mineral grain sizes in other places like Alaska, Minnesota, Finland, and Sweden. The earthworms have been living in the El Yunk for millions of years, but were brought to the other sites by humans only about 100, 150 years ago. As soon, so after the earthworms arrived, there's been significant shifts in the median mineral grain sizes. So it really looks like the worms have a huge effect. Warmer temperatures aren't just allowing worms to move around, they're also spurring scientists to think about climate solutions, including those involving mineral weathering. So if we can enhance mineral weathering, we can perhaps create sinks that don't exist for carbon to reduce carbon in the atmosphere and oceans. Okay, so earthworms, if they're indeed the true engines of weathering, we could potentially harness this effect to boost carbon dioxide drawdown. Now there's a bit of an enigma because some researchers say, well, maybe the worms aren't breaking down the minerals, maybe the worms are just bringing up smaller minerals from deeper in the soils through uh, bio perturbation. You know, it's worms moving, uh, perturbing the soil. So maybe they're ingesting smaller quartz grains at deeper depths and bringing them to the surface. Um, but if they are breaking down the quartz, the 2% figure shows that the earthworms can be a small but significant part of the weathering engine that gives rise to soils. It breaks down larger grains and can create soil, so it can enhance the quality of soils. So more research is being done to distinguish between true worm weathering and bioturbation, looking for other isotopes in the worms um, and, and, and studying the gizzards in, in, in more detail to see how, they, how, how much quartz is there and how quickly it's inter, interchanged. So finding these worm fingerprints, if you like, on, on the uh, quartz grains could strengthen the evidence for their ability to weather minerals. Okay, so that's the, the paper. You know, it's, it's fascinating. Um, okay, um, let's go to the gizzard. So the gizzard is it's an organ found in the digestive tract of some animals, including birds, crocodiles, alligators, pterosaurs, you know, ancient dinosaurs, earthworms, some gastropods like snails, some fish, and other crustaceans. 
Okay, so it's in the gizzards. The gizzard has its own Wikipedia page. Okay, so this is the gizzard of a chicken. Looks tasty. Put it on the barbie, barbecue. Um, okay, so the, one of the key things is it gets these little particles of grit to... Um, like some, some animals lack teeth, right? So they swallow stones or grit to aid in fragmenting hard foods. If you have no teeth, right, you're ingesting larger things and the stomach has to do more work. So the gizzards have small stones or grit, um, which churn around in the stomach. All birds have gizzards, but not all will swallow stones of grit, but they use it, um, you know, a bird swallows small bits of gravel, the gravel acts as teeth in the gizzard, breaks down hard foods such as seeds, helps digestion. Okay, so the gizzard stones, uh, they get round and smooth from the polishing action. When they're too smooth, they may be excreted or regurgitated or even broken down by stomach acids. Okay, um, so it talks about various species that have them and there's fried gizzards and livers, wonderful. You know, there's a popular chicken gizzards are a popular food throughout the world. Stewed gizzards, uh, no thanks. I think I would stay away from that. Anyway, so gizzards are very important. Um, this is um, some more information from the uh, paper. Um, okay, so biological weathering is arguably the most poorly constrained mode of silicate weathering, despite mounting evidence that biotic agents profoundly influence weathering rates. So most biotic or biological weathering studies have focused on microbes, fungi, and plants, while the rare explorations of worm-mediated weathering have been restricted to lab settings. So here they actually look at earthworms in the, in the soils of the forest, um, the earthworm digestion of inorganic soil particles accelerates silicate weathering by appreciable levels. They found, uh, so they measured the grain sizes at different depths in the soil, uh, the beryllium isotopes to see how long the grains were at different levels. Um, and they looked at the erosion gradient. So the particle size change with depths in the Puerto Rico's El Yunk rainforest. They saw a sharp shift in the medium particle grain sizes corresponding with the observed depth of worm burrowing at their field sites. They found that quartz grains in intensely, intensively bioturbated uh, topsoils undergo a nearly 50% reduction in volume. So they measured the soil production rates in millimeter per year from the isotopes Soil thickness measurements, they got average particle residence times of the quartz grains in the soil. Um, so they found the worm weathering rate estimates, uh, which are basically the key finding. The worm weathering rates are about 2% of the total weathering rates, which was measured to be 6.6 .6 kilograms of silica per square meter of soil per year. Um, and, and they found that, um, you know, this suggests that worms may accelerate weathering rates at levels comparable to the projected increase in um, feldspar dissolution rates following a one to two degrees Celsius temperature, temperate increase uh, in the tropics. Okay, so they also verified earthworm um, action in Alaska, Minnesota, Finland, and Sweden. So the amount of weathering rates and so on. So worms have a huge effect, which was, you know, not measured before on weathering of silicates. So here's uh, the soil uh, cross section going down, not quite a meter, 0.8 of a meter to the different layers. You can see the different colors, the different grain sizes of the soils. These are different grain sizes going through the soils and you can see much smaller grain sizes up in these regions where there's lots of worms. There's extensive worm bioturbation in this region and the grain sizes dropped 50% where the worms are. This is the, where there were no worms, the grain sizes didn't change 
Um, and uh, this is the worm weathering rate, 0 0.14 kilograms of silica per square meter per year. Um, estimated worm weathering rate. So fascinating study. Um, just to show you uh, about different particle sizes in soils, there's these, I went to Google Images, this is the clay silt sand particle size. Um, and uh, here's a good comparison right here. So these are typical sand particles, diameters of 0 0.05 millimeters to two uh, millimeter in diameter. Then you have silt particles or much finer particles in sand. Uh, 0 0.002 millimeter, which is two micron to 0 0.05 millimeters, the silt particles. And then clay particles are smaller than 0 0.002 millimeters, you know, very tiny. So this gives you sort of a view of the scale. So what the worms do is they ingest grit and particles like this, and over time they reduce the volume to um, much, much smaller. So they release, release nutrients, which then the plants can use. And there's a triangle diagram, um, which I think this one here is, is, is uh, you know, a good one. Um, it's basically, I don't wanna, what's, ugh. okay. It's not letting me get, how do I get rid of it? I can't get rid of it. Anyway, you get the idea. This is a triangle. We've got clay here. We've got silt here. We've got sand here. So sand grains, very large. Silt is fine. Clay is finer and silt is finer. And then to the clays, right? Going back to um, going back to this guy here, which I just showed you. Um, here we go, right? So sand down here and then silt particles here and then clay here. So this is 100% silt, 0% sand. So depending on the ratio of these three elements in the soils, you can have different classes of soils. Very interesting diagram commonly used in many different fields of geology, soil science, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so, so the, um, yeah, okay, so basically the worms are vital and uh, it, they, 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 um, for breaking down silicates, for weathering uh, particles, weathering the minerals, uh, reducing them into components that the plants can use. You know, by breaking down the, the, the sand and silt, you know, and clay particles into smaller, smaller particles, nutrients are released, which then the vegetation can use. So it's a very, so maybe we need to deploy worms around the planet to greatly increase weathering rates to draw down CO2 from the atmosphere and ocean. So this is a very, very interesting study. Thanks again for watching my videos. Please consider donating to my PayPal at paulbeckwith.net to support my research and videos. Thanks again and bye for now.